Hello everybody, welcome back or welcome for the first time if you're just joining us. My name is Johns Hopkins and I'm here with another of Baltimore Heritage's 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I think we're going to go down and talk about the B&O Roundhouse. And I want to do it for a couple reasons. One is that it's a really great building and has a ton of history. The second is the B&O Museum, the Railroad Museum, just launched an online site that connects various places in Baltimore with the B&O. And so if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how the B&O shaped Baltimore, um, check out their website. We'll put the address up at the end here. Um, so the B&O was, uh, uh, the B&O Railroad Museum is on a place called Mount Clare, which the B&O acquired in 1830, just a few years after it was formed. It was formed in 1827 when a gentleman named George Brown, uh, son of Alex Brown, the nation's first investment banker, George Brown gathered a couple dozen of Baltimore's leading citizens uh, for a meeting in his house and basically said, what are we going to do to compete with the cities that are benefiting from the canals that are going up? What can we do? And instead of building their own canal, uh, these Baltimoreans decided to take a stab at a new invention that was coming out of England, the train. The, uh, the Mount Clare station, uh, three years later, acquired on land held by Charles Carroll, the barrister, not the one who signed the Declaration of Independence, but the one whose mansion and plantation are in Carroll Park. Um, he gave over the lands and thus began a series of unbelievable inventions at Mount Clare. The first mile of railroad was laid there, and in fact in 1830, the same year that they got Mount Clare, the B&O built 13 miles of railroad all the way out to Ellicott City. Um, the first steam engine that was, was uh, invented in the United States, the Tom Thumb, invented by a guy named Cooper. Uh, if you know Cooper Union in New York, the university that specializes in engineering and architecture, that's the same guy. Um, and that uh, uh, the first uh, locomotive, the Tom Thumb, traveled along that track out to Ellicott City. Interestingly though, the very first train to go from Mount Clear to Ellicott City was pulled by a horse. Um, and the horse was able to do it, do that distance in one hour and 10 minutes. Uh, poor little Tom Thumb took 10 minutes longer, um, but not for long because another invention at Mount Clear um, was the powerful coal-fired locomotive um, by two gentlemen, Phineas Davis and Ross Winans. Um, and with their invention, the steam engine could go a lot faster and a lot, uh, pull a lot more weight, either uh, commercial weight or passenger cars. Um, the oldest building on the Mount Clare site is actually not the Roundhouse, which we'll get to, uh, but the depot, the uh, Mount Clare Depot. And it was basically a passenger waiting station. Um, it's still there, it's part of the museum, you can go in and take a look at it. Um, but it was needed, at least in part, maybe in large part, um, because of the coal-fired engines that Davis and uh, Winans built. Um, they were great, but they put out a ton of soot and pollution. And when you were traveling in from, say, Alcott City or, or somewhere further by 1851 into Baltimore, you had to stop at Mount Clare and you got out, you went into the depot, you waited. I think it was kind of posh, um, but the engineers pulled the locomotive onto a sidetrack and hooked up, you guessed it, a team of horses. So your last leg into Baltimore was a, a train pulled by horses because downtown Baltimore didn't want the belching, polluting, uh, coal-fired engines coming into the city. Um, in 18, excuse me, in 1844, another invention happened there, uh, at least partway there, um, and that was the first telegraph sent. And it was sent from the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court chambers that were then in the Capitol building to, uh, to Mount Clare. Um, and maybe we'll put up one of our trivia questions, or what, what were the first words that were transmitted on that, uh, on that telegraph message? Um, all right, finally to the roundhouse itself. It was built in 1884. Um, it's actually, and it was the world's largest circular structure at the time. It's actually not round. It has 22 sides. And in the middle is a 60 foot turntable. And it was basically a maintenance shed uh, for passenger cars. They'd pull a passenger car onto the, onto the turntable, spin it around, and then it would get uh, pulled into one of the 22 bays where mechanics would go ahead and fix whatever was wrong with it. Um, the, uh, I'll conclude with kind of a, a funny, uh, but not so funny story, one of those types, um, that the former director of the museum, a gentleman named Courtney Wilson, told me, and Courtney, if you're listening, I hope I, I, hope I get this right, 
But uh, when the building was being built, uh, its architect was E. Francis Baldwin, and he was one of those imperious architects. And uh, to all my architecture friends, I'm sorry, but I think you know the type I'm talking about. Um, there was right and there was wrong, and his way was always the right way. When he was building uh, the roundhouse, he wanted it to be a cathedral to railroading, and, uh, and he built this grand dome. Um, in the middle of the, uh, the design process, an engineer came up to him and said, um, excuse me, Mr. Baldwin, um, I don't think that your support systems on the roof are strong enough. And he said, more or less, uh, go away, little peon. I know what I'm talking about. We don't want to clutter, clutter the interior of the roof with all your supports. It's not a train bridge we're building here, but a, a cathedral to railroading. So he built it, of course, his way. Uh, and his way was right until 2003, when we had a uh, monster snowstorm, three feet of snow, and then another three feet, uh, the wind was blowing west to east, another three feet of snow piled on the east side of the roundhouse roof, and it collapsed. And unfortunately, um, damaging uh, priceless, uh, literally unique uh, trains. Um, some were able to be salvaged, I believe a few were unfortunately not. The reconstruction that happened uh, was equally marvelous, I think, as the original, um, but in the process, and we, we have a grand dome, cathedral of railroading again, uh, but in the process, today's architects and engineers um, did a little couple minor corrections to make sure uh, that the lowly engineers' structural supports were in place so that the next time we have a huge snowstorm, it'll remain standing. I think that's it for today, and we'll see you next time.